Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Over the holidays I visited with my sister who had as a new daughter-in-law that she was teaching to quilt. Uh, they live in different cities so there was some discussion over techniques and whatever and a urgent project that had to be done and they were using a burnisher kind of like this one. A burnisher in quilting is used to help glue things on or to set seams I don't know what else but it's used either like this or like this the problem was that she only had one and yet she had to send one with her daughter-in-law actually I said well I can make one of those for you and actually before I knew it she said I need a dozen of those so when I got home I had a picture of the burnisher and I put it into a photo editing, added some uh, scaling to it so that I knew the right size and that I could make them approximately the same. I don't think this precise precision was necessary. So here's a dozen quilting burnishers for my sister. I took a picture of my sister's burnisher. Now I've scaled the drawing to the desired size and added some markers and dimensions. I'll use this to mark approximate key points. This will only be a guide. I reserve the right to adapt it. I previously turned this wood into spindles, then on to turning. I'm going to use my skew for this project. A peeling cut does a great job of reducing the diameter on the first section. However, I will not finish this section right now. I need some wood to stabilize this long spindle turning. Now I'm reducing the diameter of the remaining sections while leaving some markers at the boundaries. Then to turn the desired profile into the wood. At times, particularly in the middle, the wood flexes and the cut chatters. I'm using my other hand to add pressure to the backside. The lathe is running near top speed, but as long as the wood is smooth and I do not grip it hard, no problem. If my hand gets too hot, then I'm pressing too hard. After all, at this diameter, the wood is not traveling radially as fast as a 10 inch project at the same RPMs. Finally, I can return to the tip to finish the profile. I'll lose live center support, but that's okay now. There's only sanding and finishing left, and I'll sand offline. I decided to burn lines in the valleys between the beads. My tri-wire burner from an earlier video does a great job, even though one wire has broken and I haven't replaced it yet. I'm using a Dremel engraving tool to sign the wood. My head-mounted magnifiers enable me to write small enough for this small spindle. Then a final touch-up with 400 grit sandpaper. Then apply shellac friction polish followed by a high-speed buffing. After sawing off the tenon, I'm sanding the angled end on the sander. Then some hand sanding of just the end and a little more shellac on the very end. I like it, but I have a bunch more to go before shipping them off to my sister. I like them. They are turned from spalted box elder, maple, and cherry. I hope my sister and her friends can enjoy them. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, Tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Now there are 8 years worth, over 400 videos to choose from on my website. But please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns.